Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and we've got a great weekend of weather ahead, and we also have a nice looking Friday ahead too, so uh, this is going to be an optimum weekend for fall foliage. If you're headed up into northwest New Jersey, uh, mainly north and west of 287, and I'm thinking north of Route 78, ideally north of Route 80, and uh, in the Hudson Valley, if you go north of 287 and beyond, you shouldn't have to go too far to find peak foliage, uh, even along southern areas, I've noticed, you know, leaves are turning a little faster this year, uh, probably in response to the lack of rainfall. Uh, so you've got a full plate ahead of you, and uh, the next week, uh, the first three days of next week, look to be very warm with temperatures above normal. We should see highs uh, into the 70s and well up into the 70s at that. Maybe somebody gets to 80 degrees on one of those three days. But there are a couple of things that I want to talk about tonight. You know, one of the more frequent questions that I'm noticing from, that I'm getting is the fact that you know we've just had two Category 4 hurricanes in uh, less than a two-week span. We're into the middle part of October. Hurricane season, you know, we're well, well past the peak. And now, usually when you go through the latter part of October and into November, activity begins to decrease, um, and that's that would be normal. But I'm thinking, looking at what I'm uh, seeing with weather models, that we still have uh, some uh, work to do here as far as the tropics are concerned. The problem is trying to figure out uh, where and, and how. Um, well, first off, what you're seeing here, this is Hurricane Nicole on the GFS. It's already past Bermuda. So that's going to go out to the east, stall out, and move east, east, northeast from there. I know I have a couple of people that watch from the Canadian Maritime Provinces, and they're always interested in whether anything's going to affect them. It looks like uh, Nicole is not going to come anywhere close and move on out. Now, as far as the tropics are concerned, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is the fact that pressures in the Caribbean uh, over the next week or so are going to be very low. So it's quite possible that something may try and come out of the southern Caribbean. Uh, we've got uh, a setup aloft that would favor that. And when we look at the um, uh, upper air, uh, uh, the upper air across the United States, we have this big ridge in the east that's building into the eastern states, and that's going to be responsible for the warm-up. But this upper high sitting here across the Gulf states uh, creates a, a, an an what we would say an anti anticyclonic flow or um, high pressure flow, a clockwise flow around the tropics, so that the easterly trade winds are pretty strong. So uh, I think that that says to me that. You know, something's going to try and happen. And, and weather models have been hinting at this for the last four or five days in varying degrees. Now, this is the new GFS model, and, and just I just want to show you, and, and by the way, I'm going to show you three different models tonight that are going to have three different ideas on how this plays. So we're talking about later next week. Actually, the GFS has two systems of interest, and both of them, you know, on this particular run, um, the model wants to uh, take it over Cuba, touching southern Florida, and out. Uh, I want to point out that in the run right before this, uh, where you can see it here, it had absolutely nothing. Okay, so, you know, we're going from one extreme to the other. And on the run before that, to show you the variation, I actually didn't even look at the 6C run last night, but let me just roll it back. On the run before that... You know, while pressures were low in the Caribbean, you know, kind of tried to take out a low, some kind of weak system, but because of all the action that the model was showing going on in the east with an approaching low coming up from the south, it really didn't do very much with it. Um, I'm going to show you the European now, uh, which has its own opinions on this, and the European wants to spin up something in the northwest Caribbean. Actually, it's kind of tied to a system in the Bahamas, and it looks like it wants to make some kind of tropical storm in the in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and then eventually that merges up with low pressure in the east, and you know has a soaking rainstorm up here uh, next week and into early next week. And then you have the Canadian, which is the laughable model of all of them. Um, the Canadian, I don't know how it got to this, but the Canadian actually has something developing in the Bahamas in the early next week, and then takes it up the east coast which makes complete, you know, it's the Canadian's way of expressing nonsense because, uh, you know, the, the, the Canadian has a habit of spinning up every single low that's out there. So 
as far as how it how this is going to happen, uh, I'm honestly I don't know. Um, but you know, I do think that something is going to form somewhere down there. I think the best, the most likely place would be in the uh, southern Caribbean, and then eventually moving northwest or northward from there. Um, there are all kinds of scenarios that are going on with regards to the upper air in the United States next week. And I'll show you a, a bit of that now. Let me just get to a different region, and then I'll flip over a little bit. You know, there's a lot of questions here regarding what's, how it, this is all going to evolve later next week because the models do try to do something with a trough uh, the GFS, I'm sorry, this is the, the Canadian model, which has a well-developed trough that forms uh, in the Ohio Valley and heads to the East Coast. And this would, you know, certainly mean for us a sizable rain event, regardless of whether we wind up with a tropical system or not. Uh, the European kind of does the same thing, except it keeps the northern part of the jet stream separate from the south. So it really goes crazy with this developing this massive cutoff in the southeast, which it gradually lifts northward. And then uh, you've got, um, you know, the GFS in its own little world. And actually, it's in two worlds because if you look at it earlier, it actually phased the trough and made for a nice soaking rainstorm moving up inland of the coast just west of the Appalachians, a non-tropical one. And then it turned really cold for a couple of days for this time of year anyway afterward. Now the new run is completely different from this. And... It has the north completely separate from the south, and it really has a fairly weak system that it wants to actually drop into the southwest, into the western Gulf of Mexico, while the northern jet stream just kind of acts on its own, and from that, nothing happens uh, other than it just turns cold and dry. So you, you, you can see what I'm dealing with here. There's just way too many possibilities, some of them more realistic than others. I think we're just going to leave it on the notion that uh, given the way the upper air is setting up, um, it's quite possible that another tropical system will develop sometime next week, and what it does and where it develops, who knows at this point. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, I have a, a post up on the website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, that goes into this in much greater detail. If you're interested, I'll put the link up, and you can take a look. And also, um, I will try and get something up on fall foliage at some point either tonight or first thing Friday morning. Don't forget all the latest breaking news, weather, sports, on Fios One News Long Island, Fios One News New Jersey, and Fios One News Hudson Valley. I'll be there coming up tonight uh, at 10 o'clock with uh, Courtney Kane and Mike Gilliam, and um, we'll have all the latest uh, breaking news and all the, all the latest uh, developments in uh, the current weather and the weekend forecast. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon.